Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Livewire Markets. My name is Vishal Tekshanani. You're going to want to buckle up for this episode because we're talking about five small cap tech stocks with massive end markets because that's been the name of the game over the last few years. Joining me on the show today is Tobias Yao from Wilson and Arden Jennings from Ausbuild. Arden, let's start with you. Sezzle, a company that needs no introduction. It says its market opportunity is $6 trillion when you combine Canada, the US and Australia combined, buy, hold, sell. Yeah, I think it's a buy, uh, Vishal. Um, Sezzle has shown great traction in the US with over a million active customers now. Um, obviously the buy now, pay later, buy now, pay later, sorry, uh, leader in the market being Afterpay over in the US has shown fantastic results, but the US market is huge. And when you combine with Canada as well, there is uh, plenty of room for a few players. Um, what we really like about Sezzle is um, that the management are fantastic in terms of um, their, entrepreneur, their entrepreneurs. Um, we also like the fact that um, they have recently hired a PayPal executive to really spearhead their enterprise um, part of the division to sign up more merchants. So that's what we're looking for over the next 12 months, see if they can sign up a few high profile uh, merchants that can really accelerate uh, the customer acquisition growth in the business as a buyer. Okay. Tobias, can Sezzle's share price keep sezzling? Buy, yes, sell. uh, sales are buy for us. Um, like Arden said, the North American total addressable market is very large. You know, we like the buy now, pay later space because they're, they are exposed to the offline to online retail shift, as well as the credit card to debit card shift, particularly by the millennial cohort. Um, right now, we are in this land grab phase. And Cezo has done incredibly well over the last uh, couple of years growing in the US. And we think with the capital they raised recently, they can uh, continue to drive growth really hard. Tobias, staying with you, next stop is NextDC, the data center giant. Pardon the pun, its share price is going to the cloud. But is it all in the price, the growth story there, buy, hold, sell? The NextDC is actually uh, exposed to the cloud adoption. We think that thematic is here to stay. Um, so next DC is a buy. Okay. Arden, Ibis World recently did a piece of research on the data storage industry and they said that the revenue run rate is going to double on the back of COVID. Is it all in the price for next DC though? Buy, hold, sell. Uh, well, I won't question your statistics, uh, Vishal, but I definitely think there's been an acceleration in the structural um, shift to the cloud, and that's really going to benefit those data center players. And NextDC is um, one of the best ways to get exposure to that. They've delivered over the last couple of months with some really chunky contract wins, uh, and we believe that the pipeline is still healthy, uh, and they'll continue to execute on their strategy. So it's a buy. Okay. Next stop is Redbubble. It says it's got a less than 1% share of a total $280 billion addressable market buy, hold, sell. Yeah, it's a hold uh, for me. So I think uh, in the short term, they've definitely uh, benefited from the uh, shift to online, uh, whether that be for customers or artists looking to join their platform. But I think um, in the longer term, still need to see um, them prove up their platform and execute quarter on quarter. It's been a volatile, bumpy road since IPO in 2016. Um, so I'd like to see them string together a few more quarters of execution before um, you know, we, can, we can really look at it seriously. But perhaps that's the opportunity. So for the moment, it's a hold. Its share price has had a cracking run to bias, up from 40 cents in March to nearly $2.50. But begs the question, is red bubble in a bubble? Look, Redbubble is still a buy for us. Um, we believe right now we're seeing a permanent shift in the growth trajectory of online companies. Their marketplace is gaining quite a bit of traction globally. If you search Redbubble on the TikTok platform, which is now very popular, they have now over more than 19 million views. So we think it's going viral. Over the longer term, uh, we believe consumers are preferring personalized products, which is where they're coming in. Um, and in addition, social influencers use the Redbubble platform as a way to promote their own brand and sell their own merchandise. So we think the growth profile is still very strong and they are trading at a big discount to their US peer uh, Etsy. So it's a buy. Staying with you Tobias, one company that's had a bit of a breather in its share price run is Megaport by wholesale. Megaport uh, is a hold for us. We really like the business long term. It's a leader in its niche. It's about two to three times larger than their next competitor. Um, it's exposed to cloud adoption and it's helping businesses uh, connect to their cloud service providers. It's a hold for us purely because we're looking for a better entry point. Okay, it, it's all about the cloud, buy, hold, sell on Megaport. Yeah, for, it's a buy for us, Vishal. High conviction position within our smaller micro cap funds. 
Uh, Megaport, as Tobias pointed out, is really exposed to the adoption of the cloud. Uh, and these are provided, uh, Megaport's providing network as a service, um, connecting up cloud technologies amongst various data centers uh, globally. Uh, so if there's one chart that I could point our listeners to, it would be um, the customer cohort chart they produce annually in their results. And it demonstrates that um, the customers love Megaport's product. And that's, that's shown in the adoption of their services and also um, the monthly revenue that they're receiving per port. Uh, it's backed by great management um, and um, Bevan Slattery as founder is still on the board and still a significant shareholder. So we see the, uh, the pullback in the share price as, as definitely an opportunity um, and I think this is one where you can let your winners run. Last stop Arden, Pushpay, a payments beast of a different kind. It allows church attendees to donate through their mobiles rather than put, putting money out and putting it on the collection plate. Processing volumes have exploded since COVID, buy, hold, sell. Yeah, I think this is a buyer, Vishal. Um, obviously, with the onset of COVID, then religious organisations, particularly churches, are still, uh, for the majority of the cases, operating online. Um, obviously, online giving is a, a, key, um, a key driver for, for them. They need to uh, receive those collections. Um, and in the US, Pushpay is one of the only providers in the space. So they're taking away what churches um, aren't necessarily focused on, being um, administration um, and church management systems and releasing them to really focus on their, their uh, engagement with their, with their um, customers, essentially. So um, yeah, we think it's a buy. Tobias, when your total addressable market is every church in the world and the statistics pre-COVID are that 90% of people were, 90% of donations, excuse me, were cash and check, is this the stock that investors have been praying for? Buy, hold, sell. Uh, push pay is a buy for us. Um, as you said, it's a beneficiary of the structural shift to digital and uh, cashless payments. You know, management has a medium to long-term target of $1 billion in revenue. You know, we believe that's very achievable given the total addressable market. We believe the uh, market underestimates the operating leverage in, uh, in a payment processing platform at scale. Um, Pushpay also has a very healthy balance sheet which they can deploy into, uh, uh, into acquisitions, so it's a buy for us. A lot of these companies don't even make a profit, but if the experience of Afterpay has shown us anything, if you push too hard on valuation, you may end up paying the price.